it was like Edgar G. Olmar, and they would he would make these films with so little money, but he was able to be particularly inventive yeah. without financial wherewithal. And I know in your case, I mean, one time you said that you could use shadow very effectively. So all you need to do is unplug a lamp, yeah. and there's your shadow. Yeah, the shadow is the cheapest set decoration. Is, uh, <laughs> sort of a motto. I arrived at, I, it's funny, when I started filmmaking, I didn't particularly like silent films or old movies or anything. Um, I just, I read a little bit about how to light, and there's a basic three light setup for all filmmakers. There's a key light, and then a fill light just to soften the shadow on the face, and there's a backlight just so that, you know, there's a slight halo of lights. You step, you step out from the background. And I remember trying that on my very first day of shooting, and I plugged in the key light and the fill light and the back light, and I just got three gigantic nose shadows <laughs> the actor. And so I unplugged the back light, and it was down to two nose shadows. I obviously I didn't have them placed right. And then I plugged the second light, and then there was just all of a sudden a kind of a German expressionist dark shadow. But, it, but the nose made like a Hitler mustache, which was like a shadow. So I just had the actor tilt his head up. And so there was this really lovely Joseph von Sternberg uh, shower cap overhead lighting, and, and the cheekbones popped. And I went, oh, this is simple. Just one light. But then, and then you didn't even need a set, because the one light just lit the face, and everything else was, the set was just immersed into blackness. And, and I just suggested the interior of a barn by having a cow mooing or something like that. Now that makes for a visually bankrupt movie. <laughs> Tales from the Gimli Hospital was my first feature film, and it's really dark. And I remember um, George Tolls, my um, mentor, saying I really like the movie, but maybe next time you should think of having, like, sets. Or something like that. And, and so I hired someone to help me with lighting, like to plug in a second light. And he aimed it away from the nose, and so there was one light for the set and one for the faces. And well, didn't you tell your actors to, to not move when you first got started? Yeah, I, I'd, um, I, I just had the camera on a tripod and I got the frame just right and, and if they moved, it would throw it off balance. So I just told them not to move. And I even um, sort of preferred it if they were lying down. Uh, I started... And I wrote a manifesto afterwards to rationalize it about how the, um, the lying down actor, or maybe even the sleeping actor, was, was the best actor of all. <laughs> well, I think we should take uh, this opportunity to watch. He, he did this uh, fantastic film. I mean, a lot, I'm, a, I'm a huge aficionado of Guy Madden's film, so I'm totally unbiased about it. But, uh, he did this six-minute masterpiece, which is called Heart of the World. Yeah. And, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this film, and I, I don't want to embarrass him, but it is just a, 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 it's, it's a monument to creativity within a restriction. Just like the, the comment I can make is Chuck Jones, when he made those fantastic Warner Brothers cartoons, the studio told him, you only have six minutes. And he thought he could, he could make feature films, but he found these, these six minutes to be uh, prophetically tied into his achievement as an artist because it disciplined him, he had to stay within a certain form, and he was able to put as much as, as he could into those six minutes. And that's the way I feel about Heart of the World. Initially it was made for the, so like the 25th anniversary of the Toronto Film Festival, and the uh, guy took it upon himself as this, as this opportunity to, I think, make one of his best films. And, and being only six minutes, he made a lot of top 10 lists of the year. It was one of the best films at the Toronto Film Festival for that particular next, uh, presentation. So let's take a look at Heart of the World and uh, we'll talk about it afterwards. <laughs> 